Sitting angle, all right? I think so. It's yes. right. perfect. Mm. Absolutely comfortable field corner. You can yeah. move a bit. Can I to wide area? Sit down. Okay. Sir, I am under. Tell me, je, kabe apna rey wano puti ta holo je, is Bengal is being exploited economically. Even apna that little two economy idea ta apna chinta kulle. Ami to prior 1957 ne ami desh phiro desh chief from Cambridge, and then I joined Dhaka University as a young. Teacher in October 1957. Or At that time, the Bengali economists were very much talking about this. Oishamoy Awami League was the provincial government, or Shahid Sorabar, the center prime minister. So the issue of disparity, exploitation of uh, East Pakistan was very much under discussion. We got caught up in this. Kintu Amar to Oisho Moy to Kono ekte bishesh expertise to chilo na. We talked to young man just back after many years outside. Amar to Emni to Oira Kumbo Bhiko to chilo na. So once you got into the process, then you got into all the discussions and the debates. Ar tarpor Amar pray 1960. Shohosholo to start speaking on these subjects. I began writing a few things here and there. In those days, to 23, 24 old young man, Shohoshichilo, Kintu, no one would notice you also at that particular time. Amarekta Obhikota Holo, that Bureau of National Reconstruction, which was supposed to bring about integration in Pakistan. So they were bringing out a book on East Pakistan. Uh, they gave me the responsibility for writing the chapter on the economy of East Pakistan. So I wrote it. I wrote it. I wrote it. I wrote it. Disparity, exploitation, non-economic because of neglect. And uh, that I wrote for this. This would be about 1959, probably, uh, during the Ayub Martial Law, first time. When, after the book was published, someone then saw my writing and they withdrew the book from publication uh, because of my writing. Now, it's a very odd book. I was 24 at that time, 59 years. I was 24 years old, like a senior lecturer of Dhaka University. So, I was a very good lecturer that a whole publication which was there would be physically withdrawn from the market. And then they republished the whole document, getting a colleague. Uh, from the university who would say more acceptable things on the economy. That was my first exposure. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. economists mm -hmm. a disparity mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to go back to Chilean. It was the late Professor Sadiq. Mm -hmm. Only uh, statistical uh, department in statistical department of director Chilean. But he had written some books which were highlighting this particular problem. Tarpur uh, Huda Shaheb, particularly Professor Nurul Islam, Dr. Mazarul Haq, Professor Musharraf Hussain, Dr. Habibur Rahman, Shobi, Motamoti, subject to pray. Anis, to put a Martin, because he was then a student. At that time, when the issue came up, he joined the university mm -hmm. with me in 1957. Mm -hmm. well, at a very famous conference hall of the Economic Association, I think in Chittagong, probably, mm -hmm. in 1956. Mm -hmm. Oishamoy, this matter of disparities, two economies, was discussed. But Amante directly amid the in terms where I began to be known on this subject. This was basically in uh, around 1961. The political discussions began to become very hot. Yeah. Because it was martial law, there was no 
to speak because they were banned from many sort of public appearance to tar por jokhon amader oi academic community theke uh, whenever we spoke on this subject the newspapers began giving us a lot of attention to amar thik mone asche ki 1961 e pray sometime in may june uh, uh, of that time fazlul haq hall er kono ekta seminar chilo Uh, in which this subject was being discussed or oishuma ami bole je ki it is appropriate to look at uh, uh, east pakistan and west pakistan is two economies or it amar kono original kotha na it was something which other economists had discussed kintu because of the poribesh at that time this was the nature of the public mood this was flashed in the newspapers as a headline আর এটা খুব ইন্টারেস্টিং ঘটনা হটল কি ঠিক ওই সময় আয়ুব খান ওয়াজ ভিজিটিং ঢাকা অ্যান্ড যাবার সময় হি ওয়াজ ইন্টারভিউড ইন দি এয়ারপোর্ট অন দ্য সাবজেক্ট অফ টু ইকোনমিজ অ্যান্ড হি সেড তারপর খুব জোর করে দ্যাট পাকিস্তান ইজ বেসড অন ওয়ান ইকোনমি তো ঠিক ওই সময় আমার ভাষণ ছিল ইন হুইচ আই সেড that there are two economies to oni ek newspaper er flash korla ek side ayub khan er statement pakistan shall have one economy tar par next dekha chilo rehman subhan says um, pakistan is made up of two economies now it is to act to slightly bizarre ghatana because ek jon byakti একটা মার্শাল ল অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেটর দেশের প্রেসিডেন্ট বিরাট একটা পাফুল লোক আর এক সাইডে এই ওই সময় পঁচিশ বছরের এখন একটা ইয়াং টিচার কেউ নাই হু নো ওয়ান হ্যাড এভ ইউন হার্ড অফ ইন দিস পার্ট অফ দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড গেটিং সাইমালটেনিয়াস বিল্ডিং উইথ দ্য প্রেসিডেন্ট অফ পাকিস্তান ওইটা দ্যাট ইজ হোয়াট ইজ ইম্পর্টেন্ট পরিবেশ দ্যাট ইফ দ্য ক্লাইমেট অফ ওপিনিয়ন ইজ লাইক দ্যাট then this is the way people will uh, yeah. look at the situation what what was the exact findings sir apni kothay kothay bujhte palen je bangladesh east pakistan is being exploited or differentiate disparity ta khub sharp oi shomoy to obvious the physical evidence was of course there matches manifested by the statistical evidence to the investment uh, figures to the dakha jay the per capita income per capita consumption the physical infrastructure of the two regions the degree of affluence to the dekha jaye to all these physical manifestations were there then when we began measuring it we found that there was enormous amount of statistical evidence tar por to amar main prostab chilo that essentially jokhon ekta physically desher dui bhag ache and there are many unique features in each of the regions it is much more sensible to see these as two separate economic entities for purposes of planning and policy making to the ekhon ekta integrated framework e dekha jay to oi shomoy to this was not very meaningful and ei ortho er jonno you were then getting a false uh, projection of the nature of, <coughs> of the problem and how you would want to really solve the problem so this problem i presented and summarized in a very famous seminar in lahore in uh, i think about october of 1961 i was still then only 26 years old and that got huge publicity all over pakistan particularly in uh, in bangladesh and then east pakistan they was it was published in the pakistan observer and they reproduced the whole article so if any article made me famous on this subject it was that presentation because i had given it in lahore at a conference on how to na- build make pakistan into a, a more unified nation amar proshno hoye shomoy chilo that unless you treat them separately and you give autonomy to the two regions so that they can plan their own uh, uh future yeah. and you treat them as two economies you will not bring about proper integration and if you don't address this problem you will get to a situation where rather than have integration the country may separate 
I at see. that point. So it, uh, again, because it was martial law in those days and mm -hmm. no one was supposed to speak like this, this matter got a lot of attention and I got a disproportionate attention from a young teacher who was then still only beginning his career. मोबिलाइजेशन हल on the eve of the lifting of martial law now then by that time because some of us were much more well known the students would come to us for uh, consultation on particular matters of how to deal with this we had this famous debate with uh, manzoor qader the foreign minister of pakistan who thought he would come to dhaka university to project the case of pakistan and the constitution he had to flee for his life from the students then he came and had a debate with teachers of dhaka university in the teachers club where we really gave him a very difficult time at that time ami chila ami professor abu mahmud a number of other teachers who were very vocal in those days they all took him on and gave him a bad time oi shomoy to we were being pursued by the intelligence agencies because of our activity tarpor to in 1964 er oi convocation ghotona holo in which one of my very dear students uh, zakir ahmed was one of the people who was expelled from the university because of the convocation incident in uh, 1964 yeah. and the famous case went to the high court on zakir ahmed versus the Uh, government of pakistan on his expulsion case where the uh, courts restored his uh, his uh, membership of the university tarpor to abu mahmud er ghatna holo in which at the instigation of some of the senior faculty of dhaka university uh, he was physically assaulted by the nsf people because in those days the economics profession was very much in the forefront and vishesh the economics department of dhaka university was in everyone's sights in those days so joko nei prokriya holo it wasn't due to disparity but due to his being superseded he then filed a writ in the court on contempt of court against the vice chancellor and so forth so ei rokom ghotona ghotlo birad then the university was closed Uh, there was major fighting between the rest of the students and the nsf boys so those were the heady days of that time yeah. and then this culminated in the choy dafa yeah. uh andolan which yeah. began and then the massive repression which took place after the six points was launched in 1966 by bongobandhu a six point er shonge apnar association chilo ba heroes no i mean to be uh, quite frank uh i was certainly not associated with its drafting mm -hmm. uh, they used the ideas which were uh presented by the economists at that time and they were very, those who did the drafting whoever they might be were very intelligent people and made very good use of our ideas mm -hmm. and incorporated it into the uh, into the preparation of the six mm -hmm. points Uh, when did you come in touch with uh, Bangabandhu or Awami League leadership? Well, how, what is your assessment about Bangabandhu as a person, as a leader? Well, we came close to Bangabandhu first due to Hussain Shahid Sorawardi. Uh -huh. uh, now, as you know, uh, Shahid Shahib was the mama of my late wife, Salma Subhan. Yes. So naturally, he would come to our house, and he would also go to the house of Dr. Kamal Hussain, mm. because Dr. Kamal Hussain's father was Shahid Saab's physician. So each morning, Bongo Bondu would accompany him, and I would meet him there. I would meet him at Shahid Saab's house when we were in Karachi, and he was visiting. We lock him house on our ghor chilo ekine. So then I knew Bongo Bondu, and in fact, I had actually met him even in 1957. when he was a minister in the Atau Rahman government mm -hmm. uh, but i didn't know him well but i certainly came mm -hmm. to know him 
Then in 1964, I was invited by uh, Tajuddin Bhai, who was then the, I think, General Secretary of the East Pakistan Awami League, to help the Awami League in the preparation of their manifesto mm -hmm. uh, for the 1964 uh, okay. elections which were right. taking place. That time, again, we came into close contact with Bongo Bondu. So, more intimately, we became associated with him after 69. Because that was the time then we began our preparations for the uh, uh, constitutional debates and we were, played a very active role in the preparation of the Awami League Manifesto in 19... Uh, we prepared that in 1969-70 for the election. Oh, Ishamoy, Nurul Islam, Anisur Rahman, Wahid Haq, Dr. Aziz Rahman Khan, Dr. Kamal Hussain. We were all actively involved in that. And in Dhaka itself, uh, we were constantly being consulted by uh, Bongo Bandhu and Tajuddin Bhai on the whole issue of what should be the economic issues which should be raised in the debates which were going on. So at that time, I had a much more intimate contact with Bongo Bandhu and Oito Nito Ekta Oshadhuran Manush in the sense that if there was any person who could be said to have real charisma, where a person as a natural leader would inspire people around him. Yeah. I have met few people comparable to Bongo Bandhu. That was that Tabekti who is known, who can move masses, only Manush said, Shang Ekta Khub intimate ekta connectivity chilo. If he saw you and he talked to you, he never forgot you. And he could zero in on you as a person. So, Prothek Manusha Shange, one of the intimate connectivity chilo. A Yama Rabigota. Amar cousin Boluchi Amake, that when he was uh, uh, studying at Harvard University in 1957, Bongo Bandhu visited Harvard, and because he was a Bengali, he escorted him around mm -hmm. the university. After 71, he was then an official in the Foreign Service. Uh, Bongo Bandhu met him, mm. said, We met at Harvard in 1957, uh, uh, whatever it is, 57 or something mm -hmm. like that. And you escorted me around, I remember you very well. And they should block look. He would know them, and he would know them. Unar familiar ki shomosha, uni ki unake oi shomoy bolatsen oi kene. Eta actu oshadharan. I have not met a major public figure with that capacity. To amar bishash chilo that that was his greatest strength, and also it became a weakness, because jokhon actor leader. Lokko lokko manusha shonge ekta personal and ekta intimate shampokho jokon hoi jaye ekhane. To then shob manusher guno ache, shob manusher ekto deficiency ho ache. And you cannot then take up the weaknesses of a person and deal with it because you also remember his human qualities. And if you are a major leader, unless you can in fact, uh, uh, unless you can in fact insulate yourself from the personal circumstances of each individual, it is very difficult for you to discharge that responsibility. Because shogolat to nojor shamne ek manush nojor ashche. Oi manush onar atyoshojon ke onar onar striyer ki shomoshra chilo onar shushur er ki bepsha chilo. What was the financial circumstances? All his workers, all the people he dealt with, he knew them. It had an extraordinary quality. Absolutely. And so everyone was an individual to him. Ekta ki onek leader shokoler to ekta abstraction ta ke manush. Manusher bishash kore, but manusher shonge puri choinai. And that was the problem. That was not his problem. He knew everybody. That's fantastic. 
আপনার কি তখন কখনো এরকম মনে হয়েছে যে আওয়ামী লীগ লিডারশিপের মধ্যে কি এইগুলো কি ওয়াট দিস টকড অ্যাবাউট ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্ট বাংলাদেশ করতে হবে এরকম একটা চিন্তা ভাবনা কি তখন ছিল না এটা লেখা না ওই সময় আলোচনার মধ্যে তো সব সময় ছিল দ্যাট যেসব আমার প্রস্তাব হোয়াট এভার ডিমান্ড উই বি মেকিং ফর সিক্স পয়েন্টস এন্ড অথনমি ওয়াজ দিস এভার গোয়িং টু বি অ্যাকসেপ্টেবল বাই পিপল হু হ্যাড এক্সারসাইজড অ্যাবসলুট পাওয়ার ফর সো মেনি ইয়ার্স এমনিও উনি সারেন্ডার করে উনি দিয়ে দেবেন এখানে it is somehow and whether eventually you would end up by going for a liberation struggle because these people who have exercised power would never voluntarily give it up merely because you have got a democratic mandate bongobondu er ei khomota chilo that he took the democratic struggle to the ultimate point which any democratic leader has probably taken in our part of the world ki you took a process where a whole nation was totally mobilized and you then challenged the people that the eta mobilization jodi amar pichone ache behind this demand unless you accept this demand this nation will have to break and so if you do not recognize this demand and accept its democratic mandate given through the election you will have to f- face a liberation struggle and this time the whole country will rally behind me and they will fight this liberation war eta to ekta central prashno chilo ekhane to lokke bujhte hobe ekon ki je march masher je ghotona holo where the whole country pledged their support to bongo bondhu and his party and the whole process of uh, bangali nationalism at that time this was unconceivable in any other country ei rokom mobilization to kotha hoy nai where total power and authority passed into the hands of a elected person who still did not exercise state power ei total mobilization kotha holo na and it was this gradual process of mobilization which created the basis for the liberation war because liberation war er bishesh feature ta ki chilo ki sadharan manush astro niye they rose up to fight in that war and even though there may have been a call for independence and people were joining the war the joining of the war was done spontaneously by people acting on their own because jokon uh, cracked down holo on 26th of march everyone lost contact with everyone else no one knew who was doing what at that time yeah. jaga jaga radio roop re ekta kotha utlo but each group of people had to act together yes and so whether you were uh, khalid musharraf yeah. uh, revolting and capturing your officers in the brahmin bar area whether you were zia rahman uh taking up arms in chitagong whether you were safiullah taking up arms in joydapur each one reacted locally and spontaneously and sadharan lok came and joined them yes. when we went into the countryside yes uh, at that time what was the situation that you saw that as i crossed the meghna mm. oi side because up to meghna to shobi was everyone was fleeing dhaka yeah. after the crackdown mm-hmm. right so mm-hmm. across the meghna was still liberated territory right. and oishomoy people were oi krishak shramik chhatro nano rokom astro niye oni prostut chilen oikhane eita to unusual mm-hmm. that unar kono itihas nai ki ami militarily amar ekta obbesh ache বাঙালি জাতিয়ের তো এইরকম একটা আর্ম স্ট্রাগল এর তো কোনো ইতিহাস ছিল না ইনফ্যাক্ট ইউ কুড সে দ্যাট প্রবলি ফর দ্য হোল জেনারেশন অফ বাঙালিজ হু ওয়াসোসিয়েটেড উইথ দ্য লিবারেশন ওয়ার দে হ্যাড নেভার হার্ড দি শর্ট অফ গান ফায়ার ইন দ্য হোল লাইফ এটা তো পাঠান দেশ তো ছিল না ওয়ে ইউ আর বট আপ উইথ গানস এরকম তো কোনো ব্যাপার তো ছিল না এখানে বাট দিস ওয়ার দ্য পিপল হু জয়েন দি আর্ম স্ট্রাগল বিকজ অফ দি পলিটিক্যাল মোবিলাইজেশন 
associated with the movement led by Bongo Bondhu and Maulana Shaheb and many other people who were involved in that mobilization. But it was this crucial period, Bishesh Marcher, uh -huh. when you develop the consciousness that you are an independent country and the Jodi Oi independence Rupre Akraman Hobe, then I will fight to defend my independence. चिंता and every day the mobilization was growing where there was nothing happening in this whole region which was not within the control of uh, bongo bondhu and his uh, leadership mm -hmm. they were the administration of the then uh, uh, east pakistan which mm -hmm. had already become mm -hmm. bangladesh to tarpor jodi ei rokom onar samne ekta reality hoye jay and this reality has been projected before the whole world because puroto international journalistic community was present there mm -hmm. every day you were having briefings mm -hmm. of 20 30 foreign correspondents who were sitting in dhaka from all the newspapers and uh, news channels all over the world so this was world news to oi shomoy the idea was that in the face of this mobilization he would come eventually to a negotiated settlement but now hotebare so when the negotiations were going on at that time between the bongo bondhu and then the uh, second in command and their leadership we were then sitting in the back room uh, assisting the negotiation process always you were getting this double message that ha hoteo pare ki ek settlement hobe and you should, in that sense, take cognizance of both eventualities. So these simultaneous realities were there, but there was always a recognition that no, a, person, a leader, even like Yahya Khan, a totally chorithrohin manush with no political sense or moral character, even he would have a sense of reality that Judi Amar ekta deshke ekta becherakti hobe, then you cannot launch a genocide and keep that country together. You have to recognize that there is a new reality which is cre being created in the country. And that reality eventually he did not recognize. So Amar at that time, Kamal Hussain and myself and Hamida Hussain had been running this weekly forum, yes. which we had started in yes. 1969. The last editorial which I wrote, it was titled Options for a Sane Man. Eight Amar Proshana Chilo Ikene in that title. The Judi Tuvanek to minimum ekta sanity wache, political sanity and manushik sanity. Then you have to come to terms with this reality. Judi to be o manush pote judi chole jao ikene. Then naturally you are going to move towards a bloodbath and you are going to have out of that bloodbath a liberated Bangladesh for the match. That was the way in which we had viewed it. Yes, yes. yes. डाउन who we brought back to journalism in the columns of forum and he used to write a column for us so mm -hmm. he at that point because he was close to the uh, democratic leaders in uh, west pakistan he decided he would come to dhaka 
and see whether he could provide any connections mm -hmm. between the democratic forces of uh, that Pakistan and uh, uh, the Bangladesh democratic forces. Ekto romantic onar ekta chinta chilom kichu kala jai. So he was staying with us, and so I said at the end, uh, he had wanted to meet Bongo Bondhu. Mm. He and Bongo Bondhu knew each other, okay. and uh, they had in fact gone on a delegation together to China in 1957. I think Shahid mm. Shah was then mm. the uh, prime minister. And so I took him to, uh, to Road 32 in the evening, right? Part Choy to By that time, the whole situation was in a very explosive frame of mind. The f big battle was going on in Chittagong over the unloading of the Swat. Yes. Uh, everyone was anticipating that a crackdown was coming. And... Um, when we went there, the whole world press was there, hajar hajar log chile no ikine. And we thought, Mazhar Khan just thought he should have a word with him because he had met with many of the West Pakistan members of parliament uh -huh. who were by then had all left or were about to leave. And they had told him that a crackdown is coming. So he wanted to raise this issue with Bongo Bandhu. And so when he saw us, he came out, he saw Mazu, he said, Aap, come inside. Mm. And then we went into his house, he locked all the doors, mm. and he told Mazar Ali Khan that Ekonto, they have decided to go for a military action. Uh, then he said, Uni Moniko Chen, that they will kill me and that will solve the problem. But, Eta Tukuno Bepan Nai. Uh, they may kill me, but uh, independent Bangladesh will be built on my grave. Yes. On our, I remember those uh, last words to Mazhar Ali Khan. Tarpur, we then came out, and uh, with this knowledge that a crackdown was coming, and then he wanted to go and meet the People's Party leadership. So he took me with him to the Intercontinental Hotel. We went up to the top floor where they were staying, and he went to meet his friend Mahmoud Ali Kasuri. He was a left-wing lawyer, Bertrand Russell Tribunal uh, member, and so forth. So Mahmoud Kasiri said to him that, oh, you people have decided that you do not want a settlement. So I said, where did you get this impression? Who told you that? As far as we know, an agreement has already been reached and it is going to be announced to the press. So we'll say, no, it's not so bad. General Peer Zada has told me that you people are uh, determined not to have a settlement. So I realized then, at that point, yeah. that Peer Zada had been playing games with both sides and giving one information to the other. So I said, it's not so bad. These are the realities. We said, nah, nah, it's a do thing. So I said, are you people, what do you think you can do? Are you going to be able to uh, go and uh, kill everybody uh, in order to uh, keep Pakistan together? He said, well, Lincoln uh, fought a war to keep the U.S. together. So I said, is that your view? Then you better be ready to commit genocide. And then since you have served on the Bertrand Russell Tribunal for genocide in Vietnam, I hope you will also sit on a tribunal for genocide in Bangladesh at that time. That was my last words to Kasuri, I remember. And so on and so forth. Then we came home. At that time, I had invited uh, Monu Kabir and Laila Kabir and Kamal Hussain and his wife to have dinner at my house in Gulshan. And when we went to their house, they said the Ida Kometa Cotton would say the whole uh, crackdown is coming. So it is the dinner of the So you better now uh, take care of yourself. So we went home, and then the crackdown started. So I was in the uh, at that time, because no one had any idea at the scale at which the massacres would be taking place. And we were witnessing this, Tarpur, when the curfew was lifted at that time. It's a March Khane, 
I think Mazhar Ali Khan was due to leave and he managed to go and get to the airport and I think he left, mm -hmm. I think, by the uh, second day or something like that. Um, but when the curfew was lifted, I then went out of my house to make inquiries as to what was happening. And uh, at that time, I think Muidul Hassan and some other friend came and said that, do you know that they have massacred all these people in Dhaka University? And to me, Ghor Bosha, so cannot, do you not think that uh, you will be a target? So at that time, who would think that a university teacher, even if he is speaking, would be a uh, target of killing? Because we had no idea that they scared each other. So I went to another house at that time. And Oi Bikale, just after the curfew was restored, uh, a whole platoon of Pakistani troops led by Colonel Saiduddin, the person who arrested Bongo Bondu uh, on the night of 25th, they came to my house to arrest me. Oi Shoma Ahmad, wife Chilo, Salma Subhan, and Naman, Teen Chile, who were very young. And they were wanting to take her into the cantonment as a hostage for me. But Ahmad neighbor seemed to know them uh, because, and they then, because I think the neighbor had some uh, relationship with General Yaqub. So General Yaqub used to come to their house and they knew them. So they said, nah, chati gachi, leave them. And so they did not um, take my wife into custody at that time. And by then I got out. And when the news came that I was myself also a target, that was the time that I decided I would need to cross the border. Uh, so, of course, then I crossed the border in the company of uh, Professor Anisur Rahman and uh, Mustafa Manwar. Yes. And, of course, we then had this encounter uh, in, uh, in the uh, uh, Narshing the Eroi Park. Yeah. Uh, in which people thought that we might be our identity proportion outlo. So Ishamoy then there was to Hoi Choi Holo, then some ex students students of Dhaka University came and identified us and told them their identity that for we then went across the border. Jawarage I met Khalid Musharraf at his uh, headquarters at Teliapada. Uishamoyam, our first cover holo, that the liberation war had begun, that our troops had taken up arms. Uishamoyam, I will tell you that I am going to ask you to give an announcement that it is there. I am going to ask you to listen to it. But this is very good that he is fighting, we are fighting. We have all now decided to take up arms. And then he gave me, he said, you people should go across the border and raise arms and support for us so we can continue the liberation war. He gave me a shopping list of arms that I should take to the Bengali community in London if I ever reach there. And they would then somehow buy arms and send it to them. Okay. Then you went to the United States, or you went to Europe first? No, first though I went across to, uh, uh, because I got to Agartala. Yeah. And at that time I found that uh, no one there were some leaders of the Awami League had reached Agartala, and we did not know who was alive, who was not alive, ki holo, na holo. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we found that Amar Siddiqui, uh, Sirajul Haq of Kumilla, and Tahiruddin Thakur were supposed to be accompanying the chief minister of Agartala to Delhi to tell them what the situation was, because no one in the government of India knew who all these people were. Or ये लोग कम शॉपी बोले कि एक तो बीरात एक तो कंस्पिरेसी चिलो हैं दिलो चेल चिलो आ ओन एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ दिस वाज दे हैड एंड तो गोस्ट में आइडिया आई मेट द डेप्टी कमिश्नर अब आगर तलो इसे डामी की कर रहे कि नहीं आमी एक ने बोले आचे हजार हजार लोग प्रस्तुत थे कि नहीं के वस्त्रों चाय के वो शेल्टर uh, Amar Siddiqui Amak Jigish Kurichi that uh, I asked him, Do you know anyone in Delhi? Because Amar Koekta Jana Shona Logache, I will give you letters of introduction to these people. Then Apni uh, Udan and you tell them what is going on. So Ishumoi, he um, said, Ami to Kunuluki Janine. So if you know some people, please come along. 
So he took Anisul Rahman and myself. And then when we went to Delhi, I phoned up Amar Tosen. Tarpur Amar Tosen took me to his house and gave me shelter uh, to have a night's sleep there. And then the next day, he took me to meet Ashok Mitra. And then we met uh, P.N. Haksar, because Ashok Mitra was the mm -hmm. advisor. Mm -hmm. Then we could present the whole uh, account of what happened mm -hmm. uh, on the night of 25th, 26th. Uh, and one of the first briefings of the government of uh, India at that high level came from us on the basis of those events. So, Ishomo Emode then, um, uh, at that time, Tajuddin Bhai and Amirul Islam got to Delhi yes, at that time. Uh -huh. And then we were brought together at that time. And while we were together waiting for news as to what was happening, we decided that we should uh, un prepare an announcement for the world and do a proclamation of independence. So, on the 14th of April, uh, the speech which he gave at the uh, Amdala yes. in uh, yes. uh. Oh, I prepared that speech for him and Mota Motik to correction. Pakistan is dead correct. under a that's lot right. of dead and body. under a Yurupam Amar shop phrase. Bodies, you know. so yes, that's right. Those yeah. were the, as I said, I, that was uh, the speech which he prepared. And then we, Amirul Islam and myself, we prepared some initial draft of the Proclamation of Independence. But since, uh, I mean, what did I know about preparing independence drafts? Uh, and he was also a young lawyer. And other people improved on that, and it became. But our main Shomoy Chilo to prepare that uh, 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 statement of Tajit Mughazami, uh, so you need to make an official pronouncement on actually how we have got to this situation. Then, yeah. we heard that M.A. Mehmet was flying to Washington to seek assistance from the U.S. and all the aid donors to give aid to Pakistan because they had a lot of money. So, that no, you must, we must now launch a counter mobilization against aid to Pakistan. And you need to go there, and whilst you are there, you should also ask the Pakistani, the Bengalis in the missions to defect and to join the liberation struggle. So then I went to the, uh, I went to London, Oishamoyto, Abu Said Chaudhry Shahib was leading the mobilization there. I met a few MPs, but Oishamoyto, the Bengali community, had been very active under his leadership. But then I went to Washington. And Oishamoy, then I was the first person to reach Washington <coughs> as the uh, official emissary of uh, what was then. Because Oishamoy was a leader. It was Tajuddin Bhai mm. sending me as his emissary. And uh, so my view was to launch the campaign for stopping aid to Pakistan. So, I landed up. I was, how old was I then? I was in 71, 36 years old. I was a reader in Dhaka University. And I was suddenly made into a spokesman because Oishamoy to Bengali to defect coordinator. So, the only person with any porichoy to speak was myself. So, I was then appearing on all the TV channels. I went and briefed all the newspapers so that articles against aid to Pakistan came out simultaneously in all the top dailies which were being published at that time, New York Times, yeah. Washington Post, Baltimore Sun, yeah. uh, to Nanorokum TV program. Then I was invited by the Friends of Bangladesh in the Senate uh, because M.M. Ahmed was supposed to be addressing senators in a lunch. Mm -hmm. So they organized a counter lunch in which uh, major figures in the Senate were hosting it. And here was I addressing Senator Fulbright and Senator Church and major figures of the Senate mm -hmm. 
on uh, the situation in Bangladesh and asking them to oppose aid and to support our liberation. And our shop show my money chilo that they did to act a key to come act a bad that who would have dreamt that a person like me who was a young person with no international exposure would be addressing all the senators. Tarpur, uh, I was invited to address the uh, you, uh, the Washington Press Club. Yeah. Normally, they invite presidents and prime ministers yeah. to address them. Be, I was addressing all the top journalists of the United States. Again, I kept asking myself that it shows that it is a very holo, a very mobilization. That this was the great achievement of the liberation struggle. That all of us became bigger than we were. And economy dekhi that everything is in reverse. became giants because they were enabled by this whole, empowered by this whole process. And I thought that it was our Niger I who would never have dreamt of being given opportunities of this nature, meeting people of such influence, McNamara, Shonge, Amar Dekha Holo, and uh, other major Did you meet public Kennedy? No, Ted leaders. Kennedy, no. Yes, I, of course, I met Ted Kennedy, Frank Church. Then, uh, by then, the defection had taken place, there was big mobilization, and they launched this campaign to pass an amendment to the aid bill for stopping aid to Pakistan, the Sex B Church Amendment, as it was called. Okay. And one of the most successful lobbying campaigns, which was carried out then, Neta Mohit has written about the, uh -huh. all this in his uh, book, uh -huh. Which was very special because Amar Monehut said that had we not had such a mobilization in which all the major political forces, plus the media, plus the citizens, then the Nixon Kissinger administration, that the fact that they did not do more and they did not more aggressively support uh, Yahya and what they were doing was largely because this was politically very unpopular in that. And this was the direct result of the mobilization which had taken place. Thanks. Uh, I had come to Europe uh, at that time after the first phase of my mobilization. The consortium meeting was taking place in Paris. Uh, so we were targeting the consortium meeting. So I came to Paris. Oishomoy Amar Rekta Khub Priyo Bandhu, who was at BIDS at that time, Professor Daniel Thona. Oni Tukub left-wing Drishtier economist who had voluntarily become a exile from the United States during the McCarthy time and had settled in France and was a teacher at Sorbonne with his wife. We mobilized them to carry out this campaign amongst all the governments which had come. We prepared a memorandum and uh, we offered it. Then we met the French establishment. Oishomoy, because of Daniel Thona, I could meet some of the famous French intellectuals, Bishesh, Andre Malraux. Uh, he took me to meet Andre Malraux. I remember it was a unique experience. And Andre Malraux was English to So Daniel Thorner then became the interpreter. And his French wasn't that good either. So we had to go to an American interpretation and this conversation that I had with Andre Malraux. Because he had a resistance to all the guerrilla warfare. So he immediately wanted to engage me in a discussion as to how he and the veterans of the World War II resistance against the Germans could take a team to help the Mukti Bahini. And he wanted to have a technical discussion with me that Kirokom Ostro Lagbe or Kirokom 
communication equipment se shob lagbe he was quite old then i guess ha ah, that's right amar to or to he died only uh, two or three years later he came to bangladesh in 72 i remember amra shunechi uni naki bangladesh se juddho korte cheyechilen no ito ami to bolchi that uni to not only juddho korte chaichilen uni to amar shonge ektu detail dalochona am ki কি রকম অস্ত্র লাগবে আমার এক্সপ্লোসিভ এক্সপার্ট আছে অ্যান্টি ট্যাঙ্ক ওয়ারফেয়ারের এক্সপার্ট সব আছে জার্মানির সঙ্গে যুদ্ধ করেছে ওই সময় তো এই রকম আপনি আমাকে তো আমি আমি কি বলবো না গে এই সব ব্যাপার নিয়ে আর কোন ইন্টেলেকচুয়াল একাডেমিশন নাম মনে পড়ে আপনার যাদের বাংলাদেশের জন্য ডেফিনিট কন্ট্রি ওই রেমন্ড ডেরন তারপর ওই ম্যাক্সিম রডিনসন এই রকম ফ্রান্সের বিশেষ ব্যক্তি তারপর ইন ইংল্যান্ড ওয়েন উই ওয়ার দে উই অর্গানাইজ মেজর টিচিংস ইন হুইচ মেনি অফ দি টপ প্রফেসরস জয়েন দাস ওভার দে তারপর ইন দ্য ইউএস হার্ভার্ড এর মেজর প্রফেসরস ওই নানো রকম হোল মেনি অফ দ্য টপ ফ্যাকাল্টি মেম্বারস অফ হার্ভার্ড উই দে ওয়াজ এ বিগ গ্রুপ অফ প্রফেসরস হু ওয়ার মোবিলাইজড টু রোট এ লেটার আন্ডার দে সিগনেচার to uh, professor robert doffman gustav papenek or uh, steve maglen national uh, harvard professors they wrote a letter to kissinger that ei rokom tumi ki balabari kochu ekhane eta amar nijer show ei rokom expertise ache and we tell you that the rights of the bengalis should be preserved and protected ei rokom to this whole process of mobilization was quite unique i went to italy and oishomoy met the leaders of the major political parties the christian democrats the socialists the communists oirkom omorto sen er italian wife uh, she had very good connections with these people so she gave me introductions and i could go and lobby amongst them to try to get italian support for this mobilization it's very nice ওই সময় আমাদের অনেক লিমিটেশনসের মধ্যে মুজিবনগর গভর্নমেন্ট কাজ করেছে হোয়াটস ইউর অ্যাসেসমেন্ট অফ মুজিবনগর গভর্নমেন্ট অ্যান্ড তাজউদ্দিন আহমেদ অ্যাবাউট দ্য পারফরমেন্স আপনার কী মনে হয় ওয়েল আই কেম ব্যাক সামটাইম আই থিঙ্ক ইন অ্যাবাউট জুলাই আফটার মাই ফার্স্ট রাউন্ড অফ লবিং টু গিভ এ রিপোর্ট অন দি আউটকাম আই ইনফ্যাক্ট আই রোট এ মেমোরেন্ডম অফ দ্যাট হুইচ ইজ মাই ফার্স্ট ড্রাফট অফ দ্যাট ইজ ইন দি মিউজিয়াম যে আমি লেখে ওনাকে দিয়েছে ইন দ্যাট তো ওই সময় আই ফাউন্ড দ্যাট দে আ গভর্নমেন্ট হ্যাড বিন এস্টাবলিশড আই থিঙ্ক ইন দ্যাট তাজুদ্দিন ভাই ওয়াজ ভেরি ক্রুশিয়াল উনিও একটা অসাধারণ মানুষ আমি অনেক লোকের সঙ্গে আমার জীবনে আমি দেখে দেখেছি নট জাস্ট হিয়ার বাট অল ওভার দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড অ্যান্ড ওনার এইরকম একটা পলিটিক্যাল ইন্টেলিজেন্স আমি কম দেখেছি unique act to cool sophisticated insightful mind he could grasp any complicated manner in 5 seconds even technical issues of economics he could understand it to understand in chilo of world affairs he and bongo bondu were the perfect combination act a charismatic leader and this enormously dedicated intelligent analytical mind coming together with a deep understanding of the political process to unique act a political combination chilo i would certainly think that chemistry was very special to the events which took us into the liberation war so his steadfastness i think was very important in giving a focus to the uh, uh, to the uh, administration which was created over there এখন ওনার পুরো অভিজ্ঞতা তো মহিদুল হাসান তো বই মূলধারার উপরে লিখেছে ওইটা হি ইজ গিভেন ইউ পেহ্যাপস দ্য বেস্ট অ্যাকাউন্ট অ্যান্ড দেন হাসান তৌফিক ইমাম বি তো এইটার উপরে ওনার অভিজ্ঞতা লিখেছে তো দে আর মাচ মো কোয়ালিফাইড পিপল টু স্পিক অন দ্যাট বাট আমি যে আমার লিমিটেড এক্সপোজার ছিল আই ওয়াজ ভেরি ইমপ্রেসড উইথ ইজ ডেডিকেশন একটু ছোট ঘরে হি ডিসাইডেড দ্যাট হি বুড লিভ ইন থিয়েটার রোডের যে অফিস ছিল ওই স্যাড যুদ্ধ না শেষ হয় আই উইল নট মুভ ইন টু এনি অ্যাপার্টমেন্ট উইথ মাই ফ্যামিলি দিস ইজ মাই টোটাল লাইফ ওভার দ্যা একটু ছোট ঘর 
a dear kichu kapur nye, that was the way in which he decided to live his life and it was his whole life that was the experience we then persuaded him i prepared a note to set up the planning board to prepare for a post liberation situation and for recovery and rehabilitation and i prepared this proposal for the cabinet they approved it and then because i was sent back to carry on with the lobbying campaign on stopping aid professor musharraf hussain was the main person who organized the planning board he was then other members uh, sarwar murshid uh, anis uzzaman swadesh bos shobi ekne jukto chilen in this it must be very positive i mean That's for right. banaras government that time you saw for ahmed chaudhry came yeah. when he crossed over, over then he became the chairman of that board yeah, but the main yeah. active yeah. figure in that was professor musharraf professor sure. इवें ओ समयते भविष्य बांगलेश की अपनारा भेजे और प्लान कर खराब अवस्था ये खूब इूनिक मन सूझकोरकम समस्या छोटो पुरो एक इनफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ध्वस हो जाए दस मिलियन लोक उल बी डिसप्लेस इनफैक्ट दस मिलियन बेस दस मिलियन तो बहरे चले ग देशे भरे तो एवरी वन वज डिसप्लेसड टू टू ब्रिंग देम बैक टू सेटल दे मेन टू गेट देम बैक इन टू दे लाइवलीहुड टू रिस्टोर एनी सर्ट अफ एक्टिविटी टू प्लान फर एड फ्लोज कमिंग इन फ्रम आउटसाइड ए रकम नान रकम समस्या छो दैट यू हैव टू डील उथ last days of the world but mm-hmm. namra pray interface shesh porjay chole eshe what about the last days of the world apnar experience ki kokhon bujhen bangla oi shomoy to last phase ami jukto chilam with the un ji a delegation had been sent over yes when the general assembly was assembled to take our case to the united nations shomoshya oi shomoy chilo that uh no one was giving you any porichoy because you were st- uh, nowadays whenever any liberation struggle is going on everyone gets recognition and so on also more no one wanted to have anything to do so we would have great difficulty in even getting into the general assembly amar uh, good fortune chilo that i found that uh, a japanese amar bondhu chilo who was a uh, contemporary when i was in cambridge and he was in oxford uh takio eguchi he later became the japanese ambassador to dhaka oishimo he was first secretary in the japanese mission so japan was then a member of the security council so he used to give me a pass to go in and he would give me briefings about what was being discussed in the security council which i could then pass on to the bangladesh delegation and of course because there were a number of cipher clerks and secretaries bangalis working in the pakistan uh, permanent yes. mission uh, they were also giving us inside information on what was the pakistanis were doing over there so we were trying to get our message across at that time we were making tv appearances a uh, famous program chilo just when the final debate in the security council was taking place and the general assembly was also debating this issue in which they had a three panel debate there was a pakistani consul general there was the indian consul general and there was myself so the pakistani uh, refused to appear on the same panel with me so then they did a panel discussion of the indian and the pakistani sat at one table mm. and i sat at another table mm. with a separate camera mm-hmm. so that we would not appear in the physical in the studio physically together mm-hmm. and then they were flashing and giving comments uh, to us so when my turn came to speak i remember uh, at that time the general assembly had passed a resolution just at that minute ah. saying that there should be an immediate ceasefire over there 
So then they came to me and said, hey, to the General Assembly, it's I say. What do you have to say? I mean, what is it? How will I have to, anything to say? But everyone was improvising. Mm. We are not party to this ceasefire because we were not permitted to participate in the debate in the Security Council. Mm. And so as far as we are concerned, we will continue the fight until uh, Bangladesh is liberated. And that is our reality. And you cannot pass resolutions affecting the life and death and future of a whole people just sitting in New York. Uh, I remember then right at the end when the final debate was taking place and uh, on the eve of liberation when Bhutto finally came uh, we have been and he tore again. up the resolution. I was sitting in the uh, assembly chamber at that time and I was witness to this when he led the walk out at that time. But by then, the end was coming. So we were all, to tension at Chilam, but we were also in a very uh, high spirits also at that time, that finally we are going to be liberated and the war is coming to an end. I remember the Japanese, my Japanese friend telling me uh, that the UN does not, the community does not like breakaway countries. And so you will have to look out for the fact that adverse resolutions may be passed. So my advice to you is to tell your people to finish this war as quickly as possible and present new reality on the ground. And that is my advice to you. Thank you, sir. I am very happy to say flawless. I am very happy to say that I am very happy to say no, I couldn't do. Then uh, uh, that was it. I returned to Dhaka, I remember, on the 31st of December in a Dakota plane from Calcutta with Professor Musharraf Hussain. Yeah. And I think the family of Tajuddin and Kamrul Islam. They, they were be. coming with me. But why were you your family then? Or could have they were you? then in London, in, in Oxford, because they came out finally. They managed to come out. They managed to come out. And then I was offered a fellowship hmm. by a college in Oxford, uh, which unfortunately I did not meet my obligations under that fellowship, though it at least was helpful to look after my family, hmm. because I was traveling all over the world at that time on this anti aid campaign to Pakistan. So they were there. And they were safe. Yes, okay. my wife and her. How we had three boys mm -hmm. who were there. Mm. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. It was excellent, so excellent. excellent.